Hey, welcome to the shop. So what if I told you threading holes doesn't have to be frustrating? Believe me, I've broken my fair share of taps. There's nothing like that sound when it breaks off and you're already so far down the road on your project and now you've got this broken off tap down in the hole. Well, I'm gonna show you some things where you uh, can avoid that. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is different types of taps. And you might not realize how many different types there are. And while some of these they say are supposed to be used for CNC machining only, I found that they work really well in hand tapping too. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Now this is a tap and die set like you might get at the hardware store or Harbor Freight. This one's just off Amazon. It's a gear wrench set. And at the price these are offered at, while they're not cheap, they aren't uh, expensive as far as cutting tools go. And so they're clearly not top tier components, but it is nice to have a complete set. And that's what I like this for. And then I buy higher quality ones of the sizes I use a lot. The type of tap that's in these uh, sets here is a straight flute hand tap. And so the way these work is you rotate them and you can see it's tapered up there. So it eases its way in and cuts a little bit more of the thread each time. This is the cutting edge right here. And then the chip comes off and it'll curl back and then it actually runs into this right here and so as you tighten it it'll jam on that chip and then you need to back up break the chip off with this other edge and then continue to proceed and you work your way forward and back like that so let's see what that looks like in reality notice everything's starting to flex that's how that load increases as the chip builds if you look down inside next to the flute you can see that chip actually forming and that's what creates the challenge with these now this back and forth motion is super tedious and it's risky business because that's where taps get broken and i'm going to tell you there are better options than these taps in my opinion that i'm going to show you here in a minute let's look at a few taps beyond what just comes in your regular set so right here these are hand taps just like in a standard tap and die set but there's a different taper on each one let me get them out of here so we can see a little bit better so this right here is a taper tap and it cuts over the first eight or so threads. This is a plug tap, it cuts over the first five or so. This is what's in most tap and die sets. This is a bottoming tap right here. It just cuts over the first uh, couple of threads right there. And so traditional handbook machining, you'd start with a taper tap, work your way through to a plug tap, finish with a bottoming tap and a blind hole where you want threads to go down as far as possible so they're useful down into a hole where it doesn't go all the way through your material. And there are different tapers on the different types of taps that we'll look at also. Now the challenge, like I'd said with those others, is that the chip comes around off of this edge right there, then it curls back and it'll get jammed and so that puts a lot of load on your cutter. And so what they've done here is they've tapered this front edge and that causes the chip to go down through the bottom of the hole. So on a through hole, this is real nice. Now this is called a spiral point tap. And traditionally they'd say this was used for automated applications, but I think they're the best hand taps for a through hole that you can get. Let's just take a look at how these spiral point taps work. So I'm not reversing, I'm just powering forward all the way through and notice those chips coming right out the bottom. So because those are directed downward out the bottom, it doesn't increase in load and I don't have to reverse at all. So here's the whole process and we'll take a look a little bit uh, more closely at the technique as well as some of these tools to keep things straight in a minute. But I'm just powering right through this quarter inch thick steel with this spiral point tap and I haven't broken any of these since I've started using them. The hole came out pretty nice. Now because I don't need to reverse these, this is a good fit for use in like a cordless drill. And as long as I have good lubrication and everything is straight, I can just power right on through. Now if you try this with regular taps, I have in the past, it's a little bit hit or miss, but it's pretty risky uh, breaking them. But with a spiral point tap, you can just push your way through because that chip pushes its way out the bottom. Uh, it's easy as that to get a functional hole in your material and you can see how much that could increase productivity. I bought a little index right here um, that I really like that has spiral point taps right there as well as their drills 
and these are really high quality ones. This was expensive, but it's one of the best tool purchases that I've made. So I think that uh, this is the best type for most through holes. Now, what if you have a blind hole and you don't have room for that chip to go down through the bottom? Well, that's where this comes in. This right here is a spiral flute tap, and you can see that the flutes are spiraled just like a drill. Let's take a look at the spiral flute tap. So I'm gonna drill a blind hole in this aluminum here. It doesn't go all the way through. Now, if I were to use this spiral point tap, the bottom isn't cut to the full depth of uh, thread, so it's not usable, and that chip would be stuck under the tap, where this will pull the chip up and it cuts to the bottom. Now in a harder material, I'd still start with something that had a taper like that and then move to this because that taper will reduce the cutting load. But in aluminum here, I can go straight for this bottoming tap. So I'll line it up and then work my way through. And once it's started straight, I don't really need that block. So I'll hold it up here so you can see that chip. In fact, I'll just remove it all the way. And you can see those chips coming up. It's nearly effortless to turn and doesn't build any of that load that you have. So I'm not reversing it at all. And I can just crank all the way down and there is my hole. So it's as easy as that. A lot of the issue here is using the right tool for the job, use the right tap, get it straight, good lubrication, and you're gonna have a nice tapped hole. Now the last type of tap we'll look at right here doesn't actually have cutting edges at all. This is called a roll form tap. And so this deforms your threads so it tapers its way out and just pushes them out. Roll form taps are generally better in an automated machine tool. See, instead of a number seven that you'd use for this quarter inch, you use a number one, which is quite a bit bigger. And when I drill a hole with that size and work my way through with the roll form tap, it's pretty easy uh, to even do by hand, even though it can take higher loads in some cases, and I get a functional hole. But here is the problem. Notice those threads really aren't very deep. And the reason for that is there's so much run out on my drill press that it's difficult to actually get an accurate size hole. But where they can be really useful is on thin wall tubing. You know, you can drill that hole a little under the recommended size on something this thin and just crank through it with a cordless drill. And I found that works a little bit better than cut threads on real thin tubing. Though if you have much load here, you'd probably want to use a threaded insert anyway. Let's look at the actual technique itself, and it all starts with the hole. So make sure to use the right size drill. Look it up in a chart. Uh, don't estimate on that because it's pretty critical, and it's always a good idea to put a little lead-in chamfer on your holes. You don't need a lot there, but it's just enough to help guide your tap into place and to help your fastener get started also. Now let's talk about how to keep your threads nice and straight going through, because see, if you're going through a hole, here and you're at an angle to it, as you thread in, it's gonna start to jam because it'll need to cut too much material off this side while you're missing that side, and so it needs to be really straight in there. Now, the best way to do this is to use some sort of a guide. In thinner material, you can usually eyeball it pretty well and it works out fine, but the thicker you go, um, the more important using some sort of a guide is. And a guide that you might already have in your shop is a drill press, or this applies on a mill too. Let me show you how that works. Now we're not gonna do this with the drill press turned on in this case, that there are ways that you can do that. I'm just going to use it as a straight guide because this is relatively perpendicular to the table and so I can turn it by hand and even if I just get it started this way straight, then I can go ahead and open my chuck and remove the tap from there and use a handle to finish it off knowing that I have everything started straight. So that's an easy way to do it with a tool you might already have. Now rather than just chucking this in the drill press, there is another option. This right here is a tap follower and so it's this little spring-loaded point and there's a little groove in the back of a lot of taps. This can sit in so if your part is fixtured, you know, with your hole directly above it, you can use this to line everything up in the drill press and get yourself a straight hole. Now for me, I'm usually running and gunning, and so a tap guide like this works really well. It can sit flat on your surface. It also has a V-block if you're going into the side of something cylindrical, um, so it can sit on there. But uh, it just helps keep everything straight, and it simply has 
a bunch of different holes that are the right size. So right here, this is a half inch tap. And if I have it sitting in here, I can't go too far off by the time I'm turning this and that just gets everything lined up. So I think this for one-off fabricating is uh, the best. It's at least my go-to right here to get everything lined up straight. Lubrication is really important when you're tapping and there are a lot of different lubricants that work really well, but I like this anchor lube. It stays in place because it's a little bit thicker and it's also water-based so you don't get the oily mess that you do. Otherwise it just rinses off pretty easily. So once you have everything lined up, good lubrication, the right kind of tap, you're moving straight. Notice how I am pushing on both sides. Even when I'm using one hand, I'm making sure to just twist and not pull from side to side on the tap at all. And that's one of the most important parts of technique to make sure that you don't have any side loading on your tap. And when you put all of that together, it goes really smoothly. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in today. Be sure to check out the description for links to my online welding and fabrication courses, as well as some of the products that I used in the video today. And as always, if you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.